question. Do you ever complain about all you have to do? <laughs> Always. Well, she's very definite. Okay, well, you know, I was complaining to God one time about everything I had to do. Nobody can be expected to do all this. I don't know how you think anybody can do it. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you made your schedule. If you don't like it, change it. So, we'll just kind of start with that. <laughs> You're the one that has said yes to all the things you do. Now, some things we have to do. But if we're going to be honest, we all have to admit that there are a lot of things that we don't have to do. We do them, and we don't even do them for the right reasons. We do them because we don't want somebody to get mad at us. We do them because we're nosy, and we don't want everybody else to go and us not know what's going on. <laughs> Amen. We just do them because we've always done them. We don't even know why we're doing it anymore. It's just, well, I don't know. It's just what we do. And if any one of you were to go home and make a list of everything you're doing and then ask yourself, each one, if it's bearing good fruit in your life, and if you'd cut out the ones that aren't bearing any fruit, you'd have plenty of time left. Hmm. You're looking at me like, no, couldn't be that easy. So stress is the, the disease of the century. It's a multi-billion dollar business between counseling, drugs, books, stress management seminars, and more. Stress is making more money than anything else. And... I just want to say this up front, and you kind of tuck this in your pocket. God will never give you more to do than what you can do peacefully. So remember that. If, you're, if you, what all you're doing is stealing your peace, then it's not God giving it to you. And I, I know what I'm talking about because I almost killed myself trying to do what I thought God wanted me to do and found out that there was a lot of reasons why I was doing it that really weren't all reasons why I should have been doing it. Stress is all around us. And I kept praying for the stressful things to go away, for the problems to go away, and I finally realized, you know what? What we need to do is access the peace that God's already given us. Actually, Jesus has already done every single thing that he needs to do for us to have peaceful, fruitful, wonderful lives. He has. All we need to do is read the book and do what the book says. So if you stick with God and you stick with the Word, what does the Bible say in 2 Corinthians 3.18? If we look into his Word we will be changed or transformed into his image from glory to glory to glory. So if you haven't made it all the way there yet, don't be upset with yourself. Just keep growing. That's all. God's not mad if you haven't arrived. He just wants you to keep going and keep growing. So the bottom line is, is that if you want to have peace, you're going to have to want it really, really bad. 1 Peter 3.11 says that if you want peace, you have to seek it and pursue it. Seek means to go after with all your strength. Pursue it. Seek it and pursue it. It's not going to fall on you like ripe fruit falling off a tree. You have to really want it, and you have to be willing to change. Is there anybody here that would be willing to change anything you need to change just to have peace? Okay. Well, God saw your hand, so get ready.
But I love what it says in the Amplified Bible in 1 Peter 3.11. It says that if you want to enjoy life and have good days, good whether apparent or not, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace. Well, the Amplified says, seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire peaceful relations with God, with your fellow man, and with yourself, but pursue and go after them. And so, you know, you're never going to have peace with other people or even peace with your circumstances if you don't have any peace with yourself. And that's really where most of our problems come from. A lot of people just don't like themselves. I know because I lived through that. And you know, when I first got started hearing preaching and hearing how we all need to love each other, I wanted to love people, but I just couldn't, and I didn't know what the problem was. And God taught me. He said, you, you can't love anybody else because you don't love yourself, and if you don't have love in you, you can't give it away. <laughs> you can't give somebody something that you don't have. God's love is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit when we're born again. So we have love in us, but if you don't love yourself, you're not receiving that love. And I'm not talking about being in love with yourself and selfish and self-centered. I'm talking about loving the you that God created you to be. Amen? And if you start to love yourself and have peace with yourself, you'll be amazed at how easy it is to love other people and have peace with them.